hey guys welcome to all of you on our channel so friends uh, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your problems as well as mains so in this video we will be discussing about our mains answer writing series in which what we do we daily give you a certain number of questions of which you have to write the answers so students uh, a lot of students were demanding that please sir also share the reference answers or model answers of those questions which you provide daily so upon that uh, uh, deciding upon that uh, demand we have decided that we will be uploading daily one reference answer for you people so that you can get an idea about how to uh, how to write the answer and uh, how to ad uh, address a particular topic uh, that is asked in the question in an effective manner so that you can uh, fetch maximum marks in your answer writing skills so your question but uh, question is uh, left being extremism ideology may be faulty but it does helps the most in mobilization of cadre discuss the reasons for such a successful mobilization evaluate government of india's policy to deal with it so just way forward so here friends uh, uh, you might be aware of the left wing, wing extremism that india uh, that is a significant channel in, in india's internal security scenario so uh, it, it is argued that uh, the, uh, the ideology is certainly faulty because no, uh, violence has no place in uh, in a democracy um, but uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the the leaders who are engaged in such activities they are uh, they, they are successful they are proving successful in mobilization of cadres so we have to discuss that what are the reasons associated with such a successful mobilization and you have to also evaluate the government of india's policy to deal it, deal with it and suggest way forward so let's start our discussion so let me tell you before starting friends that this is not a model answer because in upsc uh, no answer can be a model answer there is no such thing as model answer because each question has its uh, positives and negatives had any question answer been uh, a model answer the toppers would have scored uh, uh, 100% marks but the marks range between 50 uh, 50 to 55% so that's why we call uh, uh, this as reference source and not model answer it, uh, we were using it earlier as a model answer word uh, just for your convenience so let's start our discussion so left wing uh, extremism you know that it uh, it is now uh, nowadays showing downward trend but it still affects many parts of the country so recently it is it was noted that there is a de decline in violence and in fact uh, that uh, the, the uh, security related expenditure scheme that is there uh, that, uh, that that the government of india has this scheme uh, that that was earlier uh, uh, applicable in 126 uh, 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 left wing extremism district now these districts have been reduced to uh, 82 with addition of eight new districts as well that is now total now is 90 90 districts so certainly the number has come down from 126 to 90 districts so security related expenditure scheme is now just operate, uh, operational in 19 dist districts only so the list of also most affected district affected districts have also been uh, 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 the list has been pruned to 30 down from 36 so this shows that the left wing extremism is showing decline but uh, but but what do you mean by left wing extremism so in definition we can call it uh, the official term is used to describe the most insurgency in selected states of central and eastern india or uh, uh, it is also uh, its origin is with the uh, roots it has in the naxalbari area of west bengal uh, when there was a, a kind of uh, uh, naxalbari was basic, basically a, a village uh, that was in west bengal so violence took place in li late late, uh, late 60s in this area so after that this uh, 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 entire movement was described uh, uh, this left uh, that is uh, a Naxalite movement or you can also ca uh, called it uh, this left wing extremism so they kill civilians destroy public buildings and extract ransom from businessmen so in recent years uh, there have been uh, a decline so you can see here in the diagram clearly so uh, left wing extremism related deaths have been falling since 2010 so in two th uh, 2005 717 deaths were there 737 and then 650 648 997 1180 and then 602 367 421 314 and then 433 and uh, then 238 so obviously there has been a decline in the in the trend so ideology is the question 
question is ideology may be faulty but it does help so what are the reasons behind it so first of all friends uh, we, sh we would look on the socio-economic reasons so what are the socio-economic reasons so basically lack of human development is there so those areas uh, uh, which are affected those districts which are affected by left-wing extremism if we if we look at the developmental indices, indices of these districts then uh, it shows that uh, the human development is not much in these districts so there is poor access to health education and there is food insecurity and then uh, uh, traditionally the tribals in India have faced cultural humiliation because they are not as such part of Hindu culture so uh, they have dif distinct religion cult language and all of the practices so that's why there is a kind of uh, uh, stereotype against a dual tribes so cultural humiliation is there and also there is a multifaceted form of, form of exploitation that is going on and social atrocities that are taking place since the days uh, when the colonial rule began in India and it has in fact not ended even after independence so poverty and inequality in distrib distribution of income is there so th that can be att attributed to the colonial days as well as post independent days uh, when uh, the, uh, the fruits of the development were not enjoyed by these tribals because obviously the last dams the large projects that were taken uh, uh, that were built uh, they in fact uh, uh, led to the displacement of these tribals so poverty inequality is there then uh, poor land reforms is also a reason so because there is unequal distribution of land so colonial in the colonial time uh, the laws and policies were introduced in such a way by colonial government that it led to the kind of uh, alienation of land from these tribals and this led to uh, 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 kind of expansion of agricultural land to these areas and uh, and uh, entry of the absentee landlordism so that this thing continues to this day and then there is there are various developmental projects that are uh, taken in these areas because uh, uh, it is uh, it is a, a kind, kind of we can say coincidence that most uh, uh, the most tribal regions of india are also the uh, are, are also rich in uh, natural resources so developmental activities are taken their mining activities are taken so this has led to large scale displace, displacement of tribals from their own lands so obviously when you are displaced from your own land and you are not properly rehabilitated then obviously you feel a kind of uh, exploited you feel kind of deprived so uh, that has uh, uh, the uh, the rehabilitation has not taken place properly so that had, has led to the resentment among the people tribal people and then there is a uh, respons uh, responsibility of poor public infrastructure so poor public infrastructure is there uh, lack of roads and communication is there for astrid areas uh, aided uh, developing guerrilla warfare so uh, they, they also these uh, uh, due to public infrastructure uh, the, the, those areas which which were uh, uh, the dense forests they aided in the development of guerrilla warfare so then uh, political marginalization is also there because tribals have been largely unrepresented in the Indian political mainstream so other reasons are the governance related reasons uh, uh, which help in mo uh, the uh, which help in mobilization of cadres by the Maoists so basically then there is uh, uh, the governance related reasons are a mismanagement of forests for example there are forest policies and laws and schemes uh, the such that uh, they they uh, kind of uh, intentionally or unintentionally they discriminate against the very uh, owners of the forest that is the tribals who have lived there from uh, time immemorial and there is mismanagement of forest and uh, forest officials are not not aware of the uh, needs of these tribals uh, their uh, their kind of culture and their uh, social attachment to the forest and uh, the management is taking place in such a way that uh, it alienates uh, uh, the tri uh, the tribals which have uh, lived in these forests uh, uh, let, uh, uh, and they are the, they are now getting alienated from these forests so there is also a cultural loss a sense of social loss and a kind of loss of uh, we can say that ecology and environment uh, and uh, that link that bond that emotional bond that these tribals enjoy with these forests so then there is ineffective implementation of government schemes which are introduced for the welfare and suppression of demands and protest is also there and government has also failed to reach out, reach to people at times of crisis so there are many times when the moist leaders have resorted to violence uh, against the villages villagers but in that case the government has failed to reach uh, there at the time of crisis for example also in case of disasters and then this has automatically led to the resentment among the poor tribals and there is also government governance deficit is 
देयर एंड लैक ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटी विच पुशेज दीज यंग द यंगस्टर्स ऑफ इन टू दिस लेफ्ट विंग एक्सट्रीमिज्म मूवमेंट सो प्रीवियसली द स्कीम मैंट फॉर लेफ्ट विंग एक्सट्रीमिज्म रीजन वर आई दर फ्रेगमेंटेड और लैक्ड इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ लोकल ग्राम सभा सो इनिशियली द गवर्मेंट ऑफ इंडिया अडोप्टेड दैट स्ट्रैटी विच वॉज काइंड ऑफ अ सेंट्रलाइज स्ट्रैटी सो इट वॉज नॉट कॉरेंट एंड इन फैक्ट इट लैक्ड इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ लोकल पीपल एंड इन दिस केस इट डिड नॉट अलो द पीपल the customization of the scheme to meet the local needs so obviously the scheme was meant uh, for a better purpose but it has uh, but it uh, the schemes have failed to serve their purpose due to the lack of customization which was not available at grassroots levels and also then uh, there is a, uh, there, uh, there is a professor uh, named virginius zagza so he, uh, a panel was set up under him and he reported that uh, he reported the major uh, developmental gaps that are there that that have the potential to promote extremism in tribal areas for example uh, uh, there is a schedule 5 uh, of uh, indian constitution and uh, this schedule 5 is basically for the tribal people and uh, but the uh, which in which the governor has to uh, governor of the state which uh, which has a, a significant tribal population has to prepare a report uh, to to uh, to uh, which, which which is to be given to president so that uh, special provisions could be made in uh, in view of the special needs of these tribal people but governors have been tardy in um, uh, in the matter of submission of these reports and in respecting the constitutional guarantee that is given to these tribal uh, uh, areas in in the name of autonomy so then there is a, there is a, there are tribal advisory councils though but these tribal advi advisory councils they they suffer from an element of to uh, this uh, token, uh, token tokenism so tokenistic uh, mod, uh, th thing is that uh, uh, you say that uh, in tribal advisory committees we have the say of tribals but in fact they uh, they are very uh, minute in uh, they are very insignificant insignificant in these tribal advisory committees which advise to the government relating to the uh, welfare measures or steps that, that that have to be taken with regard to these uh, areas but uh, uh, the majority of these tribal uh, uh, affairs committees are dom councils are dominated by bureaucrats or ministers which do not represent the actual will of the tribal communities and then there is issue of tribal land alienation as i have uh, highlighted earlier so this this thing was also highlighted by this report that tribal land alienation is there dispossession is there and this is at the crux of the crisis and uh, there is acquisition of land by the state using the the principle of amin and domain and there is also uh, due to the lack of awareness of tribals the officials what they do the uh, they they in connivance with the local uh, mafias they they manipulate their records they inc they cor incorrectly interpret the law so that uh, it causes uh, uh, we can say a uh, discrimination against these tribals and they are rendered uh, we can say landless in their own land so encroachment of tribal land by non tribal uh, and immigrants is there and creation of national parks so uh, this also has a major issue because national parks have been created in those areas in which tribals used to live so uh, it is the less that uh, the 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 population of the wild flora and fauna is decreasing but in fact these tribals uh, continue to live in these areas for uh, for uh, for time since time uh, for time memorial and they know how to conserve these for us but we are resorting to a strategy in which uh, we we in fact it is also a criticism of wildlife protection act 1972 in which it is said that the approach is that that the conservation can only be brought about by the elimination of the human beings from a protected area but that is not uh, that is not the case case always it is helpful in certain cases but it is not it is not the uh, case always because these tribal people they know how to uh, to uh, uh, we can say uh, live in a mutually beneficial way uh, in these forests and then there is creation of national parks obviously they are ousted from their land and there is armed conflict resulting in forced migration and eviction from homelands and there are developmental projects leading to influx of outsiders to tribal areas thus harming tribal interests so uh, then further uh, naxal activities receive support and sympathy from local tribals and intelligentsia from ur urban areas but uh, the the support that is there from intelligentsia from urban areas is that only is to the extent that uh, they argue for the uh, rights of these tribal people so uh, that uh, some people do have active support but majority of the intelligentsia has the uh, uh, support uh, basically relating to the rights that must be safeguarded of these tribal people as as is in and trained in our constitution 
so poor infrastructure connectivity issue has already aggravated the problems and then uh, these naxals basically uh, what they have uh, done they they have basically uh, uh, pitted these uh, tribal uh, uh, tribal people the uh, villages against the government forces for the for the for the for furtherance of their interests so then uh, these uh, these uh, tribal people they have they are caught between in the middle of a conflict that has pitted the most against the government forces and in fact these tribals suffer the most and they recruit villagers uh, for their operation and later become and these nux, uh, then uh, these uh, villagers become vulnerable to arrest and torture by government forces which further alienate these tribal uh, from the government machinery so naxals have also been accused of killing and torturing villagers villagers after accusing them of police informers so uh, though the incidents have come down but the present uh, uh, the rise in social and economic uh, uh, we can say inequality poses also a serious challenge because ultimately this most insurgency uh, uh, survives on an ideology of class struggle you, which you might be aware of uh, as you are preparing for UPSC because uh, uh, we expect that you must uh, must be knowing about these ideologies that is left right center so government of India's policy is um, uh, multi-pronged so on security front we have taken multiple initiatives in the past for example there was operation steeple chase uh, in 1970s and then the operation green hunt and then operation greyhound that is a uh, that is there in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Uh, that, uh, that, that basically these greyhounds are special uh, uh, units of uh, pol uh, pol uh, units of police re uh, respective state police departments which uh, deal with, which are uh, expert in guerrilla warfare and the forest war warfare and also then there is cobra, the cobra cobra force that is there uh, the division of uh, central reserve police forces uh, which is uh, especially prepared to uh, deal with the insurgency relating to this uh, left wing extremism so the full form of it is combat resolute action force so the cobra uh, for the units are there in crpf which uh, which 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 engage in combing activities and they they engage in neutralizing these next lights so government has also tried to bring these insurgents on negotiation table and uh, offer ceasefire so often uh, uh, the, the naxal leaders have uh, come on negotiation uh, table and uh, ceasefire has also been uh, uh, signed multiple times but uh, this has not proved proved fruitful because once the see in the in, in the meantime when the ceasefire is declared these naxal leaders what they do they they in the meantime regroup them they re-energize them they revitalize them they they recruit the cadre and then they again they they again become a potent potent as the threat uh, for the security forces as well as for the india's internal security so also CAPF uh, forces have uh, conducted various programs like area domination exercises in which uh, uh, basically they try to dominate the tribal hit areas and uh, uh, but what the Naxals are doing they they just when they become aware that uh, this area domination exercise is being taken by these central armed police forces then they ju just uh, uh, leave the ground open for these uh, CRPF uh, forces and but uh, once uh, once the CRPF uh, forces retreat they they come back in the area so this this approach shows that uh, the result is not yielding so thus the government of India changed the approach uh, and then it uh, uh, followed a kind of surgical strike policy in, in which it uh, acted upon the intelligence and uh, uh, this uh, um, instead of offering ceasefire uh, it has uh, focused on strikes based on hard intelligence so this uh, this has led to the arrest as well as the elimination of many leaders as well as armed insurgent camps have been decimated so government uh, has also uh, has uh, has in place the surrender policy surrender scheme for moist so that they can be brought in back into mainstream and then there is special infrastructure scheme that is there to construct fortified police stations so police stations are vulnerable because uh, the uh, the symbols of state authority are the most vulnerable to these uh, uh, the in these districts so special infrastructure scheme is there for the fortified police station and security related expenditure scheme as i have told you uh, is there in which uh, special assistance is provided to the states that are hit by the left wing extremism so that uh, uh, they can get funds to to meet their expenditure needs relating to insurance training and operational needs of the security forces as well as rehabilitation of the left wing extremist cadres and uh, this rehabilitation of the state government concerned so community policing security related infrastructure is 
build and then for village defense committees and publicity of materials is uh, done for which the uh, security related expenditure scheme provides funds to respective state government and then there is also claim that demonetization has choked the funds but this has been debated uh, this this issue is uh, quite debated because demonetization has become quite controversial so uh, but that is not asked in this question so we will not uh, delve into the depth of this uh, thing so other is then to in 2017 home ministry la uh, launched samadhan doctrine so what does the what does this mean samadhan doctrine means so samadhan doctrine focuses upon controlling arms supply using the technology for example gps or unique identification number for those who manufacture explosives and then uh, this uh, uh, there is uh, with each crpf there is a uh, uh, provided a uh, unmanned aerial vehicle that is uav so uh, samadhan basically is a kind of uh, doctrine in which technological assistance is provided to the forces uh, to deal with the uh, these uh, this, uh, this insurgency left wing uh, extremism related insurgency so helicopter support is provided and then the joint talks forces are set up for uh, interstate boundaries because there they uh, earlier also there was a co uh, cooperation of issue among the state different state governments affected by left wing extremism due to which these uh, uh, these uh, extremists uh, they they carried on their activities uh, by residing in the by camping in the border areas of the different states so now the joint task forces have been uh, uh, set up for this purpose for interstate boundaries so that to ensure the cooperation of different states uh, so that intelligence sharing and uh, proper uh, action of operation carry uh, execution depending uh, 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 upon, based upon that intelligence sharing can be ta uh, can be can be uh, can be taken so there is also stricter implementation of prevention of money laundering act to check uh, to choke the funding to left wing extremism groups and then there is also other uh, approaches that is security related approach has already been hi highlighted then there is developmental related approach that is ministry of tribal affairs launched in 2014 one, one bandhu kalyan yojana so it was basically for the holistic development of tribal people so as is clear one bandhu kalyan yojana one means for us bandhu means uh, we can say your uh, brother uh, I, I don't know actually i'm not from a hindi uh, typical hindi state so uh, i don't know the exact that meaning of bandhu so one bandhu kalyan yojana is there and then there is holistic development of tribal people in it targeting their education employment and health care and then mines and minerals in fact in 2015 mines and minerals act was uh, amended uh, to set up this district monitoring uh, um, sorry district uh, mineral foundation so what was the purpose of establishing this district uh, mineral foundation under the mines and minerals act and uh, uh, basically the purpose was to uh, to ensure that uh, the mining activities that is carried out in these uh, left wing extremism affected districts uh, the royalty of that mining is at least uh, paid to uh, uh, to a part of that uh, the royalty that is uh, charged upon that mining is uh, is used to uh, used by this district mineral foundation for the purpose of developmental activities that uh, that can be taken in these uh, left wing extremism affected districts depending upon the action plan prepared prepared by the local people depending upon the developmental activities prioritized by these local people so there is a bottom approach a bottom up approach that is decentralized approach that is now uh, adopted and then civic action plan is that civic, civic their civic action plan is basically giving each crpf unit 3 lakh so that it can develop it can set up civic communities in uh, in the area in which they are operating for example uh, holding medical camps uh, then uh, then then sanitation drives and sports meets and organizing sports meets and distribution of study material to children and minor repairs of school buildings roads bridges so then there is media action plan also in which government has focused upon uh, the, the, uh, the publicity of government schemes that are there for the welfare of the tribal people or local people so uh, this uh, each district has been given rupees 7 lakh in this to advertise the various welfare, uh, welfare schemes of the government and then there is additional central assistance for left-wing extremist uh, affected districts so additional central assistance is basically for the creation of public infrastructure and services such as hospitals, schools, roads and rail connectivity, mobile connectivity and electricity network. So there is also special fund that is allocated under various schemes that are there for example for employment and skill development in which special funds have been earmarked for these uh, districts that is left wing extremist districts with key performance indicators and then uh, multiple initiatives have been taken like for in 14th finance commission there has been devolution of uh, more funds to the states which which 
in fact provided with the, uh, the, uh, the provided with the state governments more resources so that they can plan uh, they can use the resources in a manner they can prioritize their resources in a manner uh, depending upon the need of that particular state so as a result these governments have more funds at their disposal to carry out uh, tailor made developmental schemes as per the their requirements and then there is also uh, go uh, go government is organizing extensive training and capacity building pro uh, programs for state service officials so obviously there is need of sensitization of forest officials or for that matter local officials and which is taken by the government uh, so that uh, uh, capacity building building uh, can be taken and training can be taken so that the officials are sensitive of the needs of the forest people and they are sensitive of the uh, uh, various provisions that are there in constitution as well as in statutes for the welfare of these people for example uh, wearing the, these uh, officials about uh, this uh, forest rights act then uh, 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 that is uh, uh, panchayat extension to scheduled areas act that is space pass act so then there is road requirement plan one that has uh, uh, laid down roads and then road the uh, uh, connectivity project for uh, phase 2 is also there in which uh, uh, road connectivity has been enhanced so then there is a uh, mobile tower project that is taken in these uh, left wing extremism affected states so that the connectivity can be enhanced and aspirational district program is there in which ministry of home affairs has been tasked with the monitoring of aspirational district program in 35 left wing extremism affected districts so backward region grants fund is there and then national rural employment guarantee program is there new land acquisition act is there in which includes consent enhanced compensation so that is very important because land alienation has also been a big issue so land acquisition act is there which includes consent as well as enhanced composition as well as social impact assessment and rehabilitation and resettlement of displaced so what could be the best practice obviously uh, uh, a single strategy cannot be best practice but a multi-pronged strategy can be best practice so here the uh, uh, columbia uh, example must be highlighted because uh, here columbia is a successful example in which a uh, peace process was signed between the colombian government and the rebel party that is revolutionary armed forces of Colombia, uh, people's part uh, army so the, it was basically in it, it is based on the comprehensive rural reform in which it was decided that the uh, that the rural areas uh, they will be uh, there will be reform in every respect uh, to, to ensure that there is holistic development of this rural population increasing their and increasing and improving their participation in the government and strengthening democratic and electoral opportunities and involving the victims of the of establishment or rebel atrocities in the actual negotiation process so uh, the victims of uh, victims of, uh, from, are, are, are always there from both the sides from both the uh, from both the atrocities of government forces as well as atrocities of rebels so they must also be included in any peace process negotiation process so that their interest could also be served and peace process and this peace process led to the end of conflict between Colombian government and this uh, 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 armed forces revolutionary armed forces of Colombia people's army so conclusion is basically that uh, that in uh, 2015 the government of India released a comprehensive policy that is national action plan uh, at national action national policy and action plan to address left wing extremism so there must be resolute implementation of this uh, uh, national policy and action plan so there uh, 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 and uh, there must be holistic approach so different uh, ministries must be uh, must come um, come in coordination with each other and straight governments must come in coordination with each other so that uh, this must insurgency uh, can be eliminated from India and in fact uh, the home minister uh, the new home minister has uh, uh, a few quite few days back uh, has highlighted that it is it has entered its last leg so yes it has entered its last leg but the, uh, the complete elimination depends upon how uh, consistently and sustainably we follow our multi-pronged strategy so uh, the issue is of internal armed rebellion because ultimately those who have rebelled are uh, who are uh, engaging in insurgency are the citizens of are the subjects of government of India they are the citizens of Indian government uh, citizens of India so it is very difficult to deal uh, um, uh, de deal uh, to to carry out any in a counter insurgency operation when the local populace is uh, your uh, your citizens are your cit uh, citizens in fact so in that case uh, they are your own countrymen and militarization is not the way forward but surely multi-pronged uh, strategy that focuses upon de de uh, developmental uh, activities welfare activities can be can be of uh, can be can be of uh, we can say 
considerable value so uh, and in and you must conclude that uh, the ideology that is based on violence cannot and should not succeed in india so and it it must be uh, kind of uh, kind of eliminated such an ideology must be uh, kind of uh, we can say uh, uh, dealt with but but with a multi pronged strategy so in that case de radicalization needs uh, re de radicalization radicalization can also uh, can also be used and uh, people must be made aware in these districts that uh, uh, the government of india is not uh, just representing the class uh, the interest of one particular uh, class so it is basically for the holistic uh, development of entire nation and it is not a class based go government it is basically government of the people for the people and by the people so this is all about friends today's uh, question, question discussion so you can see that uh, already one question has consumed our 29 minutes so it is difficult to discuss all the three questions that we daily give you so if in case you are interested to join our mains answer writing initiative and to want to get uh, uh, write the, want to write the answers and get them evaluated then you can join our initiative by using this link and this will link will also be provided in the description box so daily three questions will be given to you so what will be the benefits daily three questions will be given out of which two will be from current topic and one will be from your static topic so comprehensive evaluation will also be done and valuable feedback will also be given to you and reference sources relating to all questions will be given to you like in this question so least it is also least costly so you can join for 30 days as well so you are not required to pay whole amount uh, initially so you can join on 30 days uh, 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 basis as well and uh, all the link is shown on, on your screen and this will also be provided in the description box so if in case you find it costly that is one triple nine uh, amount costly then you can also join uh, uh, answer right our answer writing series which offers daily one question so in in that uh, uh, you will get only one question daily but uh, it is quite uh, uh, quite kind of we can say cheaper and it is uh, it costs just 499 so if in case you are interested to join then you can these links and these links will also be provided in the description box so if you have any queries lastly then you can contact us on our uh, mail that is achieveis21 at the rate gmail.com or you can also contact us at our contact number that is 8968920720 regarding the pdf of uh, this model answer uh, you can get that p this pdf in our telegram channel that is uh, uh, this uh, 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 that is shown on your screen and uh, will also it this link will this pdf will also be available on our website that is www.achieveis.co.in so if in case you are interested to get the pdf do visit our website or join our telegram channel so this is all about today's video have a very nice day ahead thank you